Janik Ambrose, the filmmaker of Mondo Hollywoodland. Uh, you can see an ad for it right there. Whoa. And uh, Matt Strackbine, the letter hack, who uh, actually created this entire uh, comic based upon the film. Um, all right, let's just get right down to the, the, the burning question. Um, Matt, we'll start with you. Uh, what is the letter hack? <laughs> oh, good question. Uh, the letter hack is a prolific letter writer, um, and particularly with comic books. I, what little fame I have is from being a huge nerd and getting a lot of letters published that I would write to comic book editors. So in the back of the book, they have a letter column, and I was in there weekly for years. Oh, that's interesting. I yeah. find it hard to believe that anybody who's making comic books is really not getting their fame from being a huge nerd. Uh, but <laughs> right. uh, but le le leaving that aside. Um, all right, let's, Janik, let's start with you. The film comes out in 2019. Tell us a little bit about the film. Uh, it it looks, uh, and I haven't seen the uh, the film yet, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm inspired now by the comic book uh, to go watch it. It looks insane. Yeah, it's totally insane, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> elaborate uh, just a little bit yeah, more yeah. than that it, it's a it's about a politically confused but groovy mushrooms dealer who traverses through hollywood and kind of encounters all these goofy characters uh to find the meaning of the word mondo so it kind of has this like uh you know kind of inspired by like john waters robert downey senior kind of you know experimental psychedelic film mm. Yeah, it, it there was like a quality of like Putney Swope uh, yeah, in in some I'm of the. Huge, I'm a huge Putney Swope fan. Yeah, yeah, that I saw in like uh, in, in the previews, and when I when I see Mondo for whatever reason, I always think of Michael O'Donohue, who was a Saturday Night Live writer. Maybe you don't know him. I guess I mean this. I'm dating myself. He was in the '70s, and his film you can find it. I think I think it's probably on YouTube. Uh, but, but it was, uh, Mr. Mike's Mondo video and it's nuts. Uh, but it's, it's worth checking out. All right. But all right. So Matt, what, um, what inspired you to make a comic book? I mean, usually it goes the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, in this case, um, so you guys remember over Halloween, I did all of those, uh, spoofs of you guys as the Scooby-Doo gang. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, he saw those, reached out to me, and said, that would be great for the adaptation of my movie. Are you in? I couldn't accept the job right away because I had, you know, other obligations. So I watched the trailer for it, and I was immediately, like, hooked. So I came up with some test pages, sent them off. The rest is history. I, I made the comic, um, I don't know, what was it, like, four or five weeks later or something yeah, like I that? I, I yeah i got really lucky because like twitter scares me i i don't like twitter i usually just like uh you know look at hockey highlights but and then i just stumbled good man the, yeah the, the, i'm a huge devils fan by the way not <laughs> get off get out of here <laughs> although you have that with bradley but anyway go yeah, on you, you guys will have a uh uh the uh, your TV show, or your 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 sports show about the Devils winning the Stanley Cup this uh, June. So. Whoa! Not if they have to face the Rangers Whoa. in the first round. Anyway, yeah. go on. We've got yeah. inside. So, <laughs> yeah, the, the algorithm kind of brought me to Matt, and I got really lucky. And I just love his work. And I was just like, you know, what is this? And and I reached out to him, and I sent him the movie, and I was just shocked he, you know, responded to it because it's a very odd movie and then you know he just did an amazing job i mean i don't know what else to say other than just it was like magic you know well janic well like why 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 did you want to do that like like i i mean I, it, it's it's cool but like what made you think that like i made the movie now it needs to be a comic book well it's one of those things where it was like like five years ago when i was you know trying to make some of my other movies i had like a francis perkins biopic and like executives were like who the hell wants to watch a movie about social security you know that kind of <laughs> shit yeah exactly i'm like one guy <laughs> you know she grew up in worcester uh she went to yeah, yeah, a classical yeah. high uh, a which is where my folks went actually uh, ah. high school so I mean, there's but, a scene in worcester in the script but anyway i was i was uh i was kind of hitting a wall 
and I made this movie for like ten thousand dollars. I got some good advice from uh, I kept bothering Co Francis Ford Coppola's lawyer like over every month. I was like, can I get his advice? Finally, I got a hold of him and he was like, make a movie with an iPhone. So I was like, OK, so I just kind of made this crazy film. And, you know, the it's a movie like this has a hard time, you know, penetrating an audience. Right. So it's just kind of this. I, I wanted to kind of keep this life cycle of the movie. And I figured, you know, a graphic novel would be a cool way to kind of like re, you know, reignite it a little bit for an audience. Uh, and like I said, Matt, just, Matt it just did like magic. I don't even know. It was bizarre to, to, to witness because he just did it. And it was just like, you know, it was just it was a bizarre. Uh, it, it was a great experience, you know. Well, no, it okay, good. Sorry, Matt. Well, I was going to say, um, just in terms of movies and comic book adaptations, not every comic book needs to be a movie. I think a lot of people would disagree, but I would say that every movie could be a comic book. Mm. That's not a problem. Like adapting something that's already that already exists. There's your pre-visualization. So normally, I make a comic book based off a script, and fifty percent of that is me wondering. Okay, they've described some of this, but for the most part, what's this going to look like? Well, here's the movie. The whole thing is right there in front of me. I didn't have to think at all. So it was just drawing what I saw on the screen. And that really did give me a leg up. It, it was unconventional compared to normal, but you know, ex it expedited the process. What with, with in that process, what were there places where you took like a little bit like you reinterpreted uh, some stuff and maybe like, you know, tried to um either emotionally fit a different medium or reinterpret it. You know, people do this with plays all the time. Like there's a, there's an Ibsen play that was just rewritten. That's on Broadway right now that, you know, more or less sort of updates it in different ways, stages it in a different way. Was there any of that that was uh, involved in that? And, and, and if so, like where and, and how? Well, yeah, totally. Um, first thing I did was I made a list of timestamps and tried to translate that into pages so it was like, you know, there's a lot in the movie. It's a very fast pace. So like a few seconds could be several pages. So I had to really like think about it. Right. And I watched a movie maybe like 12 times just in that initial stage of trying to uh, trying to break it out by page and, and then by panel. And it ended up being like 90 pages long, which was not practical. So <laughs> we got on the phone and talked about it really quickly. And um it, and didn't talk about it that long at all, which I thought that, I thought there'd be more of an editorial process. But we sort of all we, we sort of both saw eye to eye right away on what should stay in and what could be cut. And so that's cool because the movie and the comic book are not like redundant, like you could read it or watch it and have a unique experience. They stand on their own. But, um, you know, the film is very, you know, Mondo. Right. That's just like the, uh, the ultimate word. I don't want to give what, any What spoilers. does that mean? Mondo I'm joking. Is, I was oh, joking. I, that was uh, that, I mean, I was joking, but that was how I was going to open up the interview. It is actually a uh, subgenre of exploitation film. Uh, normally what I'm, you could probably describe it better than me, but it's yeah, usually yeah. like a pseudo documentary style. Yeah. There's, 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 there's a sub, the Mondo is a subgenre and there's a, it's very crass. This is like very like late sixties, seventies. And I decided I didn't, it's not like that. Like, it's not, it's not like very crass and like, just kind of like crazy exploitation. Like I, people kind of joke, it's like a wholesome drug movie. Cause <laughs> like, I didn't go this route of like, you know, some of that kind of weird, uh, Mondo's a weird genre. And it, and some like Mondo purists are like, there's not enough like sex and nudity and like weird stuff. And I just, I don't know. I didn't really have like a lot of interest in doing that. So I like, like I said, people kind of call it like a, a wholesome con you know drug conspiracy movie so it's kind of it doesn't it doesn't have it's got some of those like mondo purist elements to it but keeping with the theme that it didn't have to be like traditional or conventional those are the best words i can think to use um i was able to put scenes on top of each other uh certain pages can be read a few different ways um but by the time you get to the end of the page you'll understand what's happening in the story um, and so to answer your original question, like, yeah, there were times where I had to think it wasn't a compromise as much as it was a creative license to combine scenes over top of each other. And so when you read the comic, you may be like, wait a minute, what's going on here at first? And then by, like I say, by the end of the page, you'll understand exactly what's happened. Mm. Interesting. 
Um, and so, Janik, was there any like and and you know you you can tell us. Was there any like when you saw it? Was it were you like, oh darn it? Like I didn't want this interpreted that way, or was it that no? There was none of that. It was amazing because there's, yeah, there's Matt. Like, we won't tell Matt. There's no. There's like there's like there's like eight or nine three act structures in the movie because it's an ensemble, kind of like an Altman movie where it's like, you know, that was the other thing. It reminded me of the player a little bit just from the oh, uh, that's like, oh, I, from yeah. the uh, from the just from the trailer. The, there was just a quality. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. But uh, mm. but yeah, just kind of like short, like shortcuts and stuff like that, where it's like there's so many three act structures. And somehow when I spoke to Matt, he like under like it takes a lot of like dissection because like it's a goofy movie. Like I'm not trying to say, oh, that's like this this complicated uh, you know writing process, though it was. And Marcus Hart, who's a co-writer on it, is also a big majority report fan. I should say. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, yeah, so me, uh, him and Chris Blim, who's also the star and producer, we kind of made this madness where like we would write and shoot uh, at the same time. So like I, I remember being at a bar and a car exploded out on the street. So I ran with my cell phone and I just shot it. And then we wrote that into the Antifa stuff. So like there was this kind of really complicated but organized chaos and Matt just understood it immediately. Like I was really just shocked because it's like, it's one thing to be like, Oh, I like it. It was fun. It was stylistic right. and gonzo, whatever, but he understood it all. in like, in like one conversation, he understood that. All, all, so he, I remember him pitching me the idea of like, and I just go do whatever you want. I mean, like, you know, I, I like, and he, so I was just really shocked by his ability to kind of understand what we were trying to do because it is such a bizarre movie so i'm still i'm still kind of you know star so no there was there was zero issues other than like a line of dialogue here. but like no i was so thrilled when i was looking at the pages he was making i was just like keep going i don't know just do whatever <laughs> it's funny when you said shortcuts it reminds me that i think it was it was actually also altman did shortcuts which yeah. also was very much about like that just sort of out and around. I think it was LA, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, I yeah, think, it was LA. yeah. And then, and then Paul Thomas Anderson's in Magnolia, which is a kind of derivative work of that. And it, so it kind of has this just, just constant cycle of characters going in this chaotic frenetic way. But like, you know, we, there's, like I said, there's, there's, there's some, there's some, there's some thought and structure behind it, but you know, first and foremost, it's silly and fun, you know? Hmm. So, um, I guess there, uh, I have two. Well, Matt, are you thinking about doing this for other movies? Uh, a and then sure. like and and then are you guys planning like are you is there is there a a future collaboration here where the animation? I don't want to put you any pressure on you guys. I'm just curious what's what's next here. Oh, we are. Yeah, we're already talking about it. That's that's um, in the works as we speak. There's a uh, like I said, um, any movie could be a comic reach out you know if anybody wants to make their movie into a comic we can do that and, and my thing is you know I, like i did all of the uh adaptation i did all the lettering the layouts the all the art the pencils the inks and the the uh coloring i, I i'm one stop shop um i used to art direct for comic books and i used to edit for comic books so you know being able to like jump in and do any one aspect or all of them is you know totally my wheelhouse so um, but we weren't even done with this and we were already talking about the next project and we've got a few options and I think we're honing in on one, but more on Maybe that. Maybe we do a Francis Perkins graphic novel. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. that would be pretty good. That would be great. Be pretty actually. Cool. That would be really cool. Um, it, it really is neat. Where now? So where can people, people can see, well, let's start with this. Where, where can people buy, uh, the, oh, well, let me ask you this, Janik, uh, it, in what order would you like if 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 I'm to consume both of these, what order have you given any thought to like what's the best experience to do the 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 graphic novel first or the movie first? Whatever, whatever, whatever the the person wants to do. I don't think there's a specific uh, way to do it. I think it's kind of neat to have the graphic novel first, but I also think the movie it, movie maybe makes more sense. But I think it, I'm so curious to see what it's like to read that and then watch the movie. Um, so either way, I mean, I, I think it's you know, I think it's chill either way. My right. wife uh, definitely is she she's my go to proofreader most of the time. She's an educator, so I always rely on her. So she read it and then said, "I got to watch the movie." So she like dropped everything, watched the movie after that. And she was like, oh, wow, 
I mean, you did such a good job adapting it, but it's it really is its own unique experience. She liked the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, loved it. <laughs> is it the first time you guys have found that out? Uh, it's it's good. We're bringing you guys together. Um, here it is. Uh, here is the the comic, and uh, we'll put up a link. Yeah. Uh, we'll all obviously po post the link. This is where you can buy it. Um, CWS Bookstore. Super right? cool. And yeah, that that stands for Comics Wellspring. They're out of Plymouth, Michigan, so it's an American-made product. Those folks are fantastic. They printed the book. They also um, it's, the it's, trucks. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, they do a great job, and they're great for independent creators like us because the crux of the industry has always been distribution. So they'll print the book and warehouse it, and so retailers and um, readers alike can just go to cwsbookstore.com, look for Mondo Hollywood Land, and you can get a physical or digital version of it. But since we're, you know, we're big fans of the show and we met through like the community. So out of appreciation for having us on, we have a discount code that folks should use and you can get 70% off the physical book. Wait, what? 70% off? Yeah, for That's 30 days. That's too much. That's too well, much, Matt. Business. You guys went to the Sam Cedar School of Business. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you want the digital copy, you know, if you can't wait for the physical copy to show up, you can get that for six bucks. But 70% off the uh, physical book for the next 30 days if you use majority at checkout. You know what I would do? I would get the 70% off and then I'd buy the digital too. That's what yeah, I would do. There you go. Like Perfect. Many people that's the, are that's, saying. That's the way I roll. Mm -hmm. I don't they make just, good gifts. I have redundancy. That's my... Uh, and Janik, where can where can we watch the movie? Um, Amazon Prime. Uh, it's it's streaming. You know, so if you have Prime, you can just watch it for free. I think the other question though is where where can we see Bad Situationalist? Ooh, <laughs> Bad Situationist. Uh, I, I I met Mark Barron at a screening, and I and I said and I mentioned that movie, and I think another one of them, and he looked at me like, "Who the fuck are you?" Like. like <laughs> Yeah, how do, that's, know, uh, how do you know what these are? Who are you? You know, just looked at me kind of like, what? <laughs> you know? Bad situationist is got some issues that um, that uh, I, I, I we should do a double feature. This is one of my points. So <laughs> many issues, um, but uh, maybe maybe sometime in the future. But uh, pilot season and uh, caboose is available on iTunes and uh, 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 pilot season. I got to get out there too. So, yeah, maybe maybe we'll get one of these maybe, days. Maybe we'll get a comic made of it. Maybe a bad situationist <laughs> as a go. comic would actually be yes. pretty insane. That would I'm actually ready. be pretty insane. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, Amazon Prime, uh, we can watch, uh, and uh, and 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 that's it. Or uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, that, that's that's kind of the go-to place. Just because okay. you don't have to pay. if you have Prime, you don't have to pay. Uh, and then there's like it's on Vimeo too. And then Sam, thanks for uh, when I was uh, this time last year, I was on the border, I was uh, in, in Ukraine, and you gave out the uh, those uh, the the address for the the refugees. So I appreciate that. Oh, hmm. did you? I am. Yeah, you you. I remember I, I was remember there, that. and you. Yeah, it was, it was like it was like this week last year. It was oh, like wow. I, I remember maybe last week uh, last year, but but yeah, I appreciate that. That was that was oh, helpful. amazing. Well. Guys, uh, congratulations. Really looks Thanks. great. I can't wait to both, uh, well, I've read I've read the comic, but I can't wait to read the comic again and watch the film uh, now um, as, soon as, as soon as I'm allowed to watch a movie that doesn't involve, like, kids' themes. Um, <laughs> uh, Matt Strackvine and uh, Janik Ambrose, thanks so much for your time today, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll Thanks, put guys. links to all this in, uh, in the uh, podcast and YouTube and on the website. Thanks, Thanks again, guys. guys. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, guys.